Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble Creality Ender 3 but I decided to give my message first because I realized that uh, most of my viewers are not my subscribers why not? So first of all, don't forget to subscribe to my channel clicking by this subscribe button somewhere down below so first of all, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and now we can move on to assembling Creality Ender 3 all the parts that we need to assemble this 3D printer right now on top of my table. Before we move on, I would like to share this message with you guys because I really feel that this message is sincere and they are saying that still need to be improved to be a much better like. We would like to listen to you, you guys are valued to us and we are doing our best to give you a much better 3D printer. Maybe you already assembled your 3D printer because they already give this awesome step-by-step -step assembly instructions. I really like it, but just in case, if you type how to assemble Creality Ender 3, you will probably see this video and you will probably watch it and don't forget to subscribe. For the very first step, these are the parts that you will need. We have our bottom assembly right in here, two of the aluminum profile pillars over here. These are the thick aluminum profiles that come with the 3D printer. And we also get our metric 5 45 millimeter tall screws. First of all, let's identify which one is left and which one is right. So the one that I'm holding right now in my hand with these two holes is the right one. And the one over here with the two holes at the very bottom side by side is the left one. And this is your orientation of the printer. So this is left, this is right. So we are going to assemble these on top of it with the metric 5 45 millimeter screws. If you're a single person, you need to hold your 3D printer like that and attach the right pillar on it. One more thing that I need to remind you is when you get your right pillar that you are going to attach the right hand side, there is also one more orientation. So this section is shorter than this longer piece. So the shorter section will attach the bottom of the, our 3D printer. So don't forget that. There is one more orientation that you need to know. You need to hold it like this. So you are going to, we are going to assemble this plate the shorter section in here and the hole towards the inside like this. First I'm putting all my washers into the metric 5 screws and I'm going to do that for all of them and then I'm going to put these slide these into the holes and this is the appropriate Allen wrench that comes with the machine for the left column that we have, there's only one orientation, which is you need to attach this left column to the printer like this, and you need to be able to see these small holes closer to the 3D printer base, and we are going to attach it like this. Put the washers in, after that, slide the screws in, and connect it. We just connected our two pillars to our base. For this step, we are going to connect our controller panel into the, our profile. So we have our controller panel holder shield with it. We will use two of these metric 5 8 mm connectors at this point. This time we are going to use a smaller wrench because of the head settings are different. I'm going to connect my power supply and before I do that, be careful with the power settings. Right now it is towards the 230 volts. Since I'm in the, since I'm located in USA, I'm going to swap it to 115 volts. So this section is 115 volt, and it's calibrated to 115 volt. And I'm going to connect this one into into this bar with two metric 420 screws. So the orientation is going to be like this, and I'm going to hold it from the back, slide the two screws in, and fasten them. While fastening these, be careful, do not put too much force on it. You might just destroy the threads and it, you, your power supply will not stay there. So just be careful to not over fasten them. At this step, we are going to get our Z-axis limit switch and connect it to the, our printer. So loosen these ones up if they are too tight in your assembly. So give yourself, give yourself some space. And we are going to slide them in with this orientation like this and then fasten them. So let, let's do that. So this is the section where we are going to connect it. And this is the orientation of the T-type nuts. And I'm putting them in. Right now I'm lowering my Z-axis so all the way down. All the way down to here. And then we will rearrange it if there's any 
attachment problems but right now lower it as low as possible and then connect it and then fasten them for this step we are going to get two of our M418P screws and our ZX motor and assemble it right over here so we have two screws for this job but before you put the screws in remove this coupler so that you can put the screws properly unfasten the set screw right in here remove the cap put the stabilizer screws in you will need to a little bit raise the stepper motor and fasten both screws all the way down after you do that put the coupler back and fasten it but give it a little bit space so don't make it touch to the motor like this just raise it and fasten it right now we are going to connect our lid screw in here which comes like this inside a rubber protector so take it out and slide that one in one more thing before our con before we connect our lid screw the, the section which needs to come to the top is marked with blue so this section needs to look up and this section is the bottom so this section will go into the coupler like this and after you put that one in safely fasten it also at this step make sure that your lead screw is aligned with your aluminum profile so you can basically visually confirm that it is parallel to the aluminum profile at this step we are going to use our left z-axis rollers two of these m416 nuts and the aluminum bar that comes with it which is going to be called b1 so you will left with two aluminum bars so we are going to use the longer one so not this one we are going to use the longer bar that looks like this okay get two of your metric for 16 nuts metric for 16 screws and connect the washers into them okay right now after we get our parts what we are going to do is to hold our bar aligned with our z sub assembly and turn it back try to put the metric for 16 millimeter fasteners in it's going to take a little bit effort, but I believe you will make it. And after you put them in, use your Allen wrench from the upper hole and turn them. At this step, what we are going to do is to get our sub-assembly for the x-axis and connect our extruder into it so turn your extruder upside down turn it like this and make sure that you see it all the way properly and connect it like this very simple now we are going to make the other connection which is this z-axis rollers for the other side of the x-axis bar so i'm going to get this one and hold it like this put my again again i'm going to put my two metric 416 fasteners with the washers on them like this and then start fastening it to the bar from these two holes located in these places after you fasten them turn it back and we are going to attach the belt slide the belt from the inside of the aluminum profile like this make it go all the way and hold it from here and then basically push it back from underneath after you get the belt from the top of the pulley like this send it back from the bottom of it and make sure that the teeth are aligning with each other so when you turn it upside down there are two openings located under our extruder where we are going to slide our belt in slide it in and make sure that it fits properly and do the same thing for the other side too. Make it slide properly. Now our belt is almost connected. Right now we have one more thing to do. Now we get our part for tightening the belt. So what I'm going to do is to loosen these T-nuts a little bit so that I can slide them in and hold them in this orientation 
and slide them from this aluminum profile and I'm going to make the belt go around it and slide it to your aluminum profile what we are going to do is to push it away this in this direction and then fasten it because we want it to be tight and you will feel that tightness when you move your x-axis along the both ways at this step what we are going to do is to get our axis and slide it from the top so. so when you are doing it let's take a look to the behind of it because there's something going on with our lead screw when you're sliding down be careful with this lead screw right over here so you need to align it with the lead screw nut that is coming within the x-axis you will face with this problem so you need to align your lead screw with the lead screw nut over here but you need to loosen these fasteners that are holding your screw so that it will smoothly go down sometimes you might get frustrated because it's a little bit hard to make this one turn unless you loosen these two screws after you do that and lower the axis down fasten them back up but do not tighten them too much you, you might cause the axis to lock up so it might just not move at all so be careful with these and do not tighten them too much again before i move to the next step i would like to talk to you guys about this coupler so i told you to leave a gap in here basically and i removed these two screws right now to show you something so you can move it up and down like this when it is loose and make it go up like this so give here a nice gap and make sure that your lead screw is all the way down so the fasteners located in here are very easy to destroy so I basically uh, destroyed mine and decided to change these um, fasteners to new ones so be, care be very careful while you are tightening them one more thing that you need to be careful which I wasn't is to make sure that this cable is coming from the top not under the bar if you do that you will need to remove your x-axis bar so just be very careful to not put this cable under your x bar make sure that it is coming above your bar and the proper cable orientation is as you see like this be careful now what we are going to do is to get our final bar and metric 525 screws and the washers and the 2020 profile covers these two covers right in here put these covers right away because it's e easy and there's no orientation for those you can just put it in any direction just press them and make them fit in get your four fasteners and we will attach these from the wider openings see the orientation like this and we are going to insert them from the four cord four holes and let's put this one on top of our printer and then i'm going to fasten my fasteners at this step we are going to connect our filament holders so get these it's going to be connected like that so we are going to put our bar as you see and put these plastic nuts on it At this step, we are going to use our metric five, five, metric five eight millimeter fasteners with the T nuts and connect T nut as you see in this direction. Now I'm going to plug this one in on top of my printer. So I'm going to align these T nuts as you see like this and insert them from the top and fasten it. Okay, I am going to put my filament on it too. This is my Halloween special orange filament. And we are going to print some pumpkins with it for the next video. I'm going to put this one on. Okay, now we are going to do some wiring. So we are going to first connect our screen connector. This is the socket that we have. Underneath, there are three sockets. And we are going to connect this socket into the X3. Next, I am going to connect the power supply cable. These are protected sockets. Generally, these sockets are used at lithium polymer battery connections. So what you are going to do, take these two 
orange yellowish sockets and connect them. Another connection that we are going to make is the ZX motor connection and this cable is right over here. What we are going to do is just to connect it with our Z motor. Now I'm going to connect a couple motor cables. So I have the extruder motor cable and I connect my socket like this very simple and there is another socket in my hand which is the x-axis motor it's just gonna connect right underneath so and you can do it right now I'm going to connect the x-axis limit switch right into here it's going to be a little bit hard I guess but we'll see so oh not that much hard now I'm going to connect my tubing into the socket and this is done and this cable wiring has a place in here to hold it so I'm going to use it and make sure that it is connected since we are here I'm going to also input my filament by pressing this and I'm going to push it all the way down to the extruder left is x-axis limit switch it is right located in here and I'm going to connect it as you see it is time to connect our power cord. Boom shakalaka. And there. Okay. As you can see, we just open it. It looks awesome. And let's play with it. So when we prep when we click it, we see the info screen, prepare, control. There's no SD card right now. Let's plug the SD card in. So, SD card comes with the micro SD right in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to remove this and put it in. And then, click the menu button and initialize SD card. Boom, print from SD. So let's see what's inside the SD card. So there's this installation guide, test of .g code, there's one G code. Right now, let's auto home everything. Now we need to level our printer, but there is no leveling option within the software. I didn't see it. After I auto home everything, I'm going to disable steppers. So now I'm going to move my extruder to the each corner by hand, and I'm going to use the business card and put it underneath, and basically. I will release the knobs underneath until I reach the correct position and feel the resistance in between my nozzle and the bed. And I'm going to do that for all corners. After you feel this resistance, what you need to do is to auto home it again and go over this step one more time. And after you auto on, disable the steppers and repeat the process. I need to warn you about one more thing, which is these clippers. So make sure that you put them into the correct orientation. So for example, with that handle, don't put a clipper in this region so it will hit to bar right over here so basically don't put a clipper in this region put them to the this side or this sides okay let's start our very first print so i'm going to click my button and go to print from sd in here i'm going to select test dash dog dot g code and right now my bed is heating up to 50 celsius degree and then my extruder is going to heat up to 200 celsius degree and then print will start and we will watch it go. Congratulations guys, you assembled your Creality Ender 3 and you started your very first print with it. And we are going to see how it's going to turn up. If you have any questions or comments, don't forget to put them down below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for the new upcoming videos.